How's it everybody? Alex Comstock with Whitetail DNA here. I'm out here in the backyard just flinging a couple arrows. It is middle of August, headed to North Dakota here in a couple days. But in this video, I want to talk about archery practice for bow hunting. So we're in the, we're shoot about two, two and a half weeks here leading up from deer season. I just want to talk about kind of some things that you should be thinking about slash trying to implement in your shooting regimen opposed to every time to shooting, just stepping out in the yard, letting a handful of arrows fly at a target and calling her good. So that's what I'm doing tonight. But tonight I'm just working on some form, just some release stuff, just really just trying to get a bunch of reps going. But the first thing that I want to touch on is shooting with buddies slash trying to create some type of pressure. So like this summer I've been out shooting, me, Garrett and Luke, we've been shooting uh, not a ton, but not as much as I'd like anyway, but some. But well, when you're all shooting together and with buddies and um, you know, it kind of can create some pressure and you don't want to be screwing up and anything that you can do to elevate your heart rate, um, to try to replicate, you know, that moment of truth is such a tough moment and there's so much going on. Your heart rate's elevated, there's adrenaline going, anything you can do with buddies to help raise that heart rate, right? Whether it's a little side bet or just honestly razzing each other anything where you really like i don't want to screw up here i want to put in a perfect shot that's going to help you and that's helped us and i mean i guess i can speak for myself it's helped me and every year when i get that to that moment of you know shooting with buddies or if you go to an archery shoot you know like a 3d event you're know, with a bunch of people that that inherently is going to cause a little bit of nerves and wanting to shoot well and that's just going to help so that's something i find kind of important and something that helps me Second thing I want to talk about is shooting from long distances. So I haven't done as good a job as this this year, but I've got my bow now dialed into 60. And even though I will not shoot a deer at 60, the furthest I'd probably feel comfortable shooting this year is 40. Um, I'm trying to like bring my range down as far as how far I'm going to shoot. I really think I really want those deer at 20, but I know a lot of people, you know, they'll routinely practice at 70, 80, 90, 100 yards. And what they're doing is, even though they may never shoot a deer that far, you know, they're, what they're doing is they're doing that that way when they get a 20, 30, 40, 50 yard shot, it seems like it's nothing. You know, they've been practicing at 50 or at, you know, these long distances. And so by doing that, you know, if you're shooting at 100 yards, the smallest mistake, the smallest flinch, the smallest this or that is gonna cause your arrow to be considerably off compared to shooting at 20 yards. So if you have the ability, you know, that's something I struggle with. I don't really have many spots that I can shoot that far. Um, you know, I've got a terrible setup in my yard. I got a little block target. I brought my deer target to Luke's house because it's just better there. But even then I got to hop in the car, go drive to shoot. And I would rather have something to just route the back door, but is what it is. But if you have the ability to shoot from long distances, I highly recommend it. So let's see, I've just fired off like two, four, six arrows maybe. Let's go grab these. I kind of want to see how these did and uh, it will kind of finish up on a couple other tips I got. <clears throat> All right, what do we got here? Not too shabby. I'll take it. All right, because I'm lazy, I take a seat here, finish this off. Next thing I wanna talk about that I find very important is shooting from an elevated position. Now, shooting from 15, 20 feet up is just different than shooting from the ground. And most often than not, if you're in a tree stand or a saddle, that shot angle, it just, it just creates challenges. And so whatever you're gonna be hunting out of, I recommend practicing out of. So like, for example, this would be my first year ever hunting out of saddles. And so I've been the last couple times I've been out shooting, so I've been getting up in a tree in a saddle because I've never hunted out of a saddle. And it's something that I definitely need to get used to. And so not only am I just practicing from an elevated position, but I'm also practicing from a saddle. 
and getting used to that and all that goes into it. And so if you're gonna be hunting out of a saddle, wanna practice out of a saddle. If you're hunting out of a ground blind, you just definitely would wanna practice at least from a seated position or if you're hunting out of a tree stand, practicing from a tree stand. So that's maybe one of the most important is because once you get up into a tree or you're, however you're gonna hunt, if you've never practiced that way, you're setting yourself up for failure. Next thing I want to talk about is going out and shooting one arrow. I found this to be incredibly helpful, especially um, as you really get closer to season. Walk out in the morning or in the evening, you know, it doesn't have to be the only time you shoot in the day, but come out, throw your target out at a random distance or walk to a random distance, you know, maybe don't range it, you know, just kind of, you're put in a position like you're hunting, you know, a deer steps out, you don't have time to range, you gotta let one arrow fly, how do you do? Um, because when it comes down to it when you're hunting, you get one shot. So another thing that I think can really help you as you're practicing for bow hunting. All right, the last thing I wanna talk about, and then I'll be out and be on with this video, is shooting in low light situations. So a lot of times when you're shooting, or a lot of times when you're hunting, you're gonna be put in a situation where you have to take a shot in low light, whether it's the morning or the evening. And if you could practice this, because everything is different in low light, you can't see the pins as well, you can't see the target as well, or what you're shooting at. If you can practice in these low light situations, that way when you get to the actual, you know, say you've got a, a big buck standing at 25 yards, you've got two minutes of legal shooting light left, you know, you've practiced in those situations, you feel comfortable and feel confident, because all these tips, what it leads down to is being confident in the moment of truth, because if you're not confident, you're not nearly good of a shot. So. Hopefully all these tips will help you. Um, if you haven't tried any of them, definitely want to implement them. You'll definitely want to implement them. It's not rocket science. It's just trying to encourage you to just not walk out in the yard, shoot six arrows, go back in the house, and that's what your shooting is for the day. So definitely try to implement these. It'll only help you. Uh, if you enjoy this video, please hit that like and subscribe button below. Like I've said in previous videos, we have a ton of videos coming down the pipe. We've got, this will probably be the last, like, you know, how to slash tip video as we're gonna be rolling into actual stuff. Headed to North Dakota and well, when this goes live, uh, it'll be when I'm headed to North Dakota or the day before to do a bunch of prep stuff. So I'll bring you all the prep videos Then we'll be hunting and uh, then we'll just be rolling into the season. So hopefully it's a good year. Hopefully you enjoy this video. Appreciate you watching. I'll see you in the next one.